I created a family tree wiki template in Notion that resembles the ancestry research hub that I've been using for the past year. I've been using a combination of Obsidian and Notion to create a family tree booklet for my family. And I'm gonna share with you today how to use this template in the way that I have been using my Ancestry Hub. There's a link down below to the template you can duplicate to use as a whole as it is, or to pick it apart for inspiration for your own build. Let's get right into it. This is the link you guys will be able to see down below in the description. This is the landing page. Now down at the bottom here, there are two different links. One for getting started. So where to start the family tree off with a root member. In most cases, the root member is yourself who is making the family tree. Or you can go right into a family dashboard and take a look around. So we're gonna start with getting started. Now I did create this. This is not part of my wiki that I've used, but I wanted to create a portal to get it started. And I think I figured it out here. The first one is going to be adding the name, the year of birth and death, if the death uh, year applies to the root member. Like I said, in most cases, the root member is yourself. For me, I'm gonna have it be my great grandfather. So I'm just gonna add a new row here, go over to the website with my citations, which is ancestry.com. I do use other sites, but this is my main one. If you're interested in family research, I do recommend ancestry.com. I also recommend using family search if you want a free option. I'll leave other resources I've used down below as well. I'm going to input some information here, like he was born in 1885 and died in 1962. And you'll notice on the right hand side that a lot of these properties are going to start changing as I add in information. And this is into the title of the page. So already we have most of this filled out. The year he was born has been extracted and the year he died and even an approximate age died. We're going to narrow that age died down further once we put in his date of birth and date of death. Also, if you don't know the year they were born, I just put a question mark here and it will leave the year born empty. Goes by is going to be a nickname. So if William went by Will, I would put inside of quotations, Will. Let's go on to step two, applying the template to the member. All that's doing is clicking on the person, going down to the body of the page and clicking on a template. In this case, he is a man and he is a through member. He is the first member and which means he is directly related to the root member. He is the root member. So yes, he is a through member and he is a male. That'll give me an icon with a blue silhouette. I'm going to open this up as a page and then all this information down in the body of the page, which we'll get to people who are not through members would be non through. They would be siblings, aunts and uncles. So William's parents would be through members and his grandparents too, but not his great aunts and uncles. Step three, adding his date of birth and date of death. April 14th, 1885. And March 30th, 1962. This has changed the age he died to 76, more specifically, now that we've added those dates. Let's go to step four, creating the first surname page. I'm going to attach him to a surname or a family name, Lathrope. Go to the next step, step five, and give Lathrope a template. So, if I toggle down all members, it should show William as the first member. Also, there's some calculations happening here, like the average age died so far is 76, since the only member in here has an age of death of 76. As you add more members to Lathrope, that average age will change. Average number of kids will also change as members are added. Number of members right now is only one, of course. And I have a roll up for earliest generation, which is also the first generation. 
And I could also change this emoji to an England flag because this is an English family. Okay, now I'm going to add a root member's father. So this is going to be his direct father. I'm gonna go back to my ancestry to get his father, Robert, uh, and let's maybe make these abbreviations. Robert M.C. Charles Lathrop. And he was born 1847 and died in 1902. So I'm going to put that in here and that's really all I need to do. I also need to attach him to a surname, Lathrop, which we just made. Now for children, I'll have to look for our root member because that is his child, William. And then I'm gonna give Robert a template as well as a new man through member. Next up is adding the root member's mother and then we'll be done. You can put in Cora Louise Green, 1856 to 1931. Give her a template as well, but as a woman through member. Search for William as her child. And her husband, which is William's father, Robert, that I just created. I'm gonna search for him. And going on to step eight. Looking at our root member here, we have a few things. We do have his birth year that he is a male and a through member. I'm gonna click through to him. And the rest of the information that I'm going to add to him will be through his page. Up at the top, we have an ID number as one. The root member always has an ID number of one. Bookmark, if I want to bookmark this page, which I will since I'm working on him. Verification, is he verified? Likely is if it's a root member. Surname is Lathrop, side is root member. Date of birth, date of death, appearance. So I do have a database for appearances. It does give you some options. Let's say he has an average height, an average build, blue eyes, and brown hair. Coming down here, at the top there's a section for parents. We have identification numbers for them, which I'm going to go through, and surname. Cora does not have a surname yet. I'm going to add that to the system. Green, create a new page, green in surnames. Click through. I'm just going to click that template there. And I believe she is also from an English background. Also, we have side maternal. So these were all automatically inputted during that eight step process, putting in the root member and their parents. This is already done for you. I can verify that these are indeed his parents. And really the verification drop down menu, I like using to not only indicate that this was indeed um, someone in the tree, but also that most of the information that I've gathered about this person can also be proven. And then I have a formula property here called relation. This is the relation this person has to the root member. In this case, Cora is the mother and Robert is the father. Down here in the spouses section, he does not have a spouse yet, so I'm gonna create it right now. Maybell Elizabeth. Chesney. And give her a template of new woman not related. And her surname is McChesney. If I want to add that, of course. And in this case, I do. but I won't be working with her family line since she is not related to my root member. And the side is going to be root spouse. 
verification is verified. And through select property is not related. Now the ID number of her is none. I'm not giving her an ID because she is not related. But let's talk about those ID numbers. And I'm using the on and toffle sorting method, which is a great sorting method for family trees, especially when they get out of hand, because you may start looking at a family member database of over a hundred or a thousand entries. So a good way to sort this is to use this method. And in short, it goes like this, or at least this is how I do it. Okay. So what this says is member you're dealing with has a number, their father, is going to be that person's number times two. And then for mother, it'll be times two plus one. His father's father would have a number of four because that would be two times two. His father's father's mother would be four times two plus one, which is nine. His father's father's mother's father would just be this person times two. And so on. So this person here's mother would be 18 times two plus one, its father just 18 times two. And you just keep going down the list. I do have an explanation here as well. As for siblings, um, it's going to be the same as the root member. So if he is number 20, his brother is also 20 and his sisters as well. Now this um, Anintafel uh, sorting method doesn't really apply to siblings, but that's kind of my workaround. I just make them the same number as the root member they're associated with or the sibling of. Anyway, let's go back to William. Now, if you do have a lot of pages inside of your system, you have a big wiki like this, I recommend using the shortcut Command P so that you can quickly navigate through pages um, without clicking on different databases and searching manually. So beyond spouses, I also have siblings, which does include the member of the page, children of the member, and citations attached to them. So the next thing I would do is if I already have information about his sibling, I would just add it through the parents um, database add siblings by adding to the parents children. So let's see if he has siblings that I already know about. We have Emma Lathrop, 73 to 81. And I am going to click through to her page and give her a new woman sibling slash aunt uh, template. And if I want to quickly copy and paste these two uh, entries that are in the children cell into Robert's children, I just make sure that the cell is blue, copy, and click my arrow down and paste. Now they both are attached to those children. And if I go down to siblings, she should appear here for William's sister. She was born before William, so automatically my sort is grabbing the year born ascending. So if I want to quickly add some more information for Emma, I don't have to click into her page. I created this drop down menu to add an ID to the sibling group. She does not have an ID. I like keeping it the same as the root member, which is one for siblings. Root sibling as a side. Adding the surname. Again, I can just highlight the cell blue and copy and paste and add verification. And I can kind of just keep doing that if I'm certain that they are the siblings of the person. 
There's another section down here for timeline and adding family events. This is where I'm going to start adding sources and giving proof to my research. Before I add my family events for William, let's say that I noticed that Emma Lathrop died very young, which she did. And I want to know more about that. So I go down a rabbit hole and I stray far away from William, which was the person I was working on. So the reason why I selected bookmark for William was because I knew that this is the person I want to focus on until completing his profile, even if I go off somewhere else. So what this bookmark checkbox does is if I go to the family dashboard here and go to all bookmarks, I'll be able to see under members, my bookmark, William. There are two different views here, one for gallery, one for table. Either way, I can add a new event. The first event is going to be a birth event. So in 1885 colon birth of William Lathrop. And there is a gallery view for the same event. I'm going to click through to it and fill out some information about this event. Give this event a specific date, April 14th. Okay, now that I have that, I can also add a location. So he was born in Stamford, Connecticut, and I can add that here. And where this relation goes is to a places database. That is essentially my family atlas. I'm gonna create a new page, Stamford, Connecticut, Oh, I did not finish the word Connecticut. United States in places. That's the places database. I'm going to click through and add a template. Pretty much every page created in this wiki has a template in the body of the page. New location. Give me this nice emoji. I do have um, a property here, Google Maps, if I want to go and find the link to Google Maps and apply it here. Body of the page will give me all of the family events associated with Stamford, Connecticut. I'm going to describe what type of event it is via one of these templates in the body of the page. I have a new birth event, residence, marriage, baptism, religious, immigration, military, and death. I'm gonna click birth. Now when I go into Stamford, Connecticut, it should show me under the birth toggle of events in this location, the birth of William. If I have any specific notes I want to add on to this event, I will put it in this uh, description property here. If it is an event that does not have a citation, but it is word of mouth, I will click that box there. Now down here at the bottom is where I'm adding all the citations that prove this event to be true. And I do have a peer title syntax year colon title which is exactly how I have it laid out up here. It's important to do this because if there is no specific date that you know of, but you know the year of the event, and of course with family research, a lot of the times that's the case as you go back far enough. Down here in hidden properties, I do have a formula for year that's just grabbing that year and turning it into a number. That's gonna be great for sorting my events. So all the citations that prove this event, let's take a look. I think there's one in particular that gives the full date, which is his World War II uh, draft card. Now, as for the bibliography citation, which is going to be the title of the citation. For me, now, if you're someone that's very uh, savvy with citations and you know exactly how all of that works, I don't. I actually just put as much information about this source as possible inside of this page and I figure out how to properly cite this source when I go and I create uh, the story of my family, which I'm doing in Obsidian, or I have done already in Obsidian. I am just collecting as much information as possible because if you are using Ancestry, or family search, they do give you citation information, but it's not always exactly uh, formatted the way it properly should be. Anyway, under detail, I like to just copy this. And under working citation or bibliography citation, paste that in and just make sure that his name is here. 
So I'm gonna do a little like arrow to the right and put in William Lathrop. And then inside, give it the uh, template of a document with an image because this does have an image attached to it. If there's no image, I'll click that temporarily. It will give you a placeholder image like this. This one has an image. And now I can go back here, go grab that image, save it to my computer. and upload it to this page. Awesome. And I can add a verification. This is pretty much verified that it is indeed his draft card. And it is in collection, I can call World War II draft cards. I can also do that within this page here, within the event. I can add the collection and the members associated. So first of all, I know the members associated with this citation, and that would be William. But there's also someone else on here, and that's Maybell. That's his wife. I also have some addresses here, so I can add all of that information. Next member is gonna be his wife. This citation is proving his birth, but it's also proving a whole lot of other things. So I'm gonna make sure I have everything down that it does prove inside of my wiki while I'm here. Instead of waiting for an event where I would need to prove his occupation, I can just do it right here and attach it right to my citation. So the collection for this is going to be World War II draft cards. Create a new page, World War II draft cards in collections. Collections are collecting groups of citations. And inside of here, I can say new collection. And this will collect all citations that happen to be World War II draft cards. So inside of here, I also have an address mentioned. So I'm gonna put that down, just the street address, 430 West Jackson. And then inside of this address, I'm going to add a location. So this is now inside of an addresses database. And I can click new address. This is a placeholder image. If I want to go and find the actual image of the house, I can put it here. Citations associated is this one, the World War II draft card. And I can see the household here, William and Maybell. This is a roll up from the citation that I just created, which I can edit down here. And I can also add a location, which also goes to my family atlas um, as a residence. New location. See, addresses is a backlink, and it's giving me the address. And also, I can keep collecting all of the addresses that may associate with this place. This citation also proves that his occupation was a lithographer. So I'm going to add occupation to this citation because an occupation was mentioned. I'm going to say lithographer. And once again, inside of this page, there are template options. This would be a new technical career. I can also go maybe to Wikipedia and find a link to explain more about what a lithographer does. I also need to attach the members associated with this occupation. So the reason why I wanna do this manually is because a lot of the times when you have a citation that includes occupation, most of the time it's a census record and it has multiple people on it. So just simply rolling up his name wouldn't really work in this instance because there could be multiple people in the citation that have the job of a lithographer. So in the lithographer page, I'll be able to collect all the members, all the families that may be associated, and it's in series technical careers. But this is all that this citation provides for me, an address and an occupation for William. So if I go back to William, 
in the body of his page, there should be his parents, which we've already filled out, spouses, one spouse, also a birth event, which has this neat uh, cover image. And I know that this event is verified because my citation is verified. If my citation was just very likely or unverified, the event would be unverified. Now, if I had three different citations here proving his date of birth and one was unverified, the rest were verified, it would show all verification tags. For instance, if I add a new citation and make it verified, it'll have both tags there. Just letting me know that the citations attached are verified or not. If I go down here to citations, I'll see my World War II draft card that I just inserted for William because he is attached to this citation. So is his wife. So if I were to go to his wife's page here in spouses and go down to citations, I will also see that draft card. So we know we have a lithographer in the Lathropes. So if I were to go to surname Lathrope, and come down here to occupations. In the background, what's happening is it's collecting all occupations that happen to be attached to members in the Lathrop family or with the Lathrop surname. Also, all of the locations associated with them. In this case, Stamford, Connecticut, of course, is associated with William because that's where he was born. And so far we have Robert Lathrop, the father of William, and Emma Lathrop, the sister of William. Average number of kids is two, number of members is three, and number of households is one. Average age died now is 46.3, and that's happening in the background. I can also add new members through these events. Let's add one more event to William, where he lived. So in 1900, he lived in Hoboken, New Jersey. So I'm going to say 1900, lived in Hoboken, New Jersey. So this is a census record, which means that there's no exact date that this happened. I just know that he happened to live here in 1900. So I'm going to leave the date empty. Location, I'm going to add a new location to my atlas. Again, New Jersey, United States, and this is the syntax of all my locations. I do city, region, country. And you'll also notice that the region is being extracted, New Jersey, and the country as well. I can also add a fourth, so I can add a place here, and it will assume that Hoboken is the city, New Jersey is the region, and United States is the country. And the type is place. So this is a new residence event. And again, just like the other event, I can attach the citations that prove the event, which in this case is the 1900 federal census. Now, the first thing I want to do here is connect this to, or grab that citation. So I'm going to go to source, Grab it here. And I'm gonna give it a template with image. And the collection is going to be 1900 United States Federal Census Record. Give that a template as well. And the members associated with it, of course, are William. But there are also new people here, like his parents. Actually, in this case, he's living with someone that he's not related to. The head of the house is a woman who happens to actually be his father's third wife. Um, so I'm going to actually insert her name in here. 
But we do have siblings of William as well that are blood related, Frederick and another Charles here. So this is a little bit more complex. There's more things happening. Not every person inside of a citation is going to be his direct blood relation. So in members related, I'm going to add more members, which I can do right here. And I know who she is. She is Lillian May Arnold. I'm gonna go find out when she was born, 1862 to 1924. and give her a template of a new woman who is not related. Now, I do know that she is the third wife of Robert, who is now in the wiki, so I'm going to search for husband here and search for Robert. Okay, she's the first on the census. Now, Lillian May Arnold is the head of this household. She has a relation to someone who is blood related to William, so I'm going to include her in the wiki. Her children that happen to also be living here, I'm not going to include in the wiki because I don't really need those people here. But I can make a note of it inside of the page. And I can press the at symbol to find Lillian's page and say her two sons, Byron and Charles, are also living here. Now, as for the people who are blood related to him, there is a Frederick Nolan Lathrop, which is a sibling of William. eighteen eighty two to nineteen sixty four so we're getting some information for him he is an uncle or a sibling so new man uncle or sibling and also we have one other person that William is related to here and that is Charles Charles Eli Lathrop who is also a sibling or an uncle. Now they are siblings of William, so if I want to indicate that here, I can go into Frederick and make sure the parents are the same parents as William. Or I can skip that part and just go into William's page, go into parents, and add siblings. So the other one was Charles. And now we're adding more siblings to William. Nice. And we have proof that these are his siblings via this event. And there is an address attached to the census record as well. First, I'm going to actually download the image and insert it inside of here. And also inside of this citation, I can see the event right here that it is attached to. So let me go back here and save this to my computer. Going back to the family event this is associated with, we have a lot of different options, right? To add different things to the citation. If there was an occupation that was mentioned or a religion or a conflict uh, or a cemetery. Okay, well, I can go into this citation 
if I'm already in it, I don't have to go back. Just have the properties come down here and fill in occupations or street address or religion, so on here, or cause of death. And I don't really have to do it inside of the family event, but it is a lot more convenient to do so. So I don't have to keep clicking around. But while we're here, there are some occupations and a street address. It looks like William is an errand boy. So I'm gonna add an occupation here called errand boy and add it to new service career and make sure William is attached to it. So now he has two different uh, occupations here. There's also a lithographer in the household. That is not William, but his older brother, Frederick. So we can add Frederick to the list, which is actually spelled wrong, of course, and add more occupations as well. But maybe I just want to keep it like this. I have to go do something and I'll come back to it later. I'll bookmark it. Go back to William where I was at and just keep adding information here like this. You'll notice that if I bring down the properties here, I have his occupations also inside of his page and I can look through all of that. Now I also want to finish off his siblings. So I do have his siblings attached to the parents they're supposed to be attached to, but if I come down to siblings here, I still need to add their IDs. They are all one because they are the sibling of a root member. And their surname, so they can be attached to that family. Now if I go into Lathrope, average age died has changed, average number of kids is changing, uh, number of members is five, more occupations are being added, more locations should be added as well, and more members. Now what I want to do is go to William again. And I want to be able to make sure that this event is connected to all people involved, which is everyone in this household. So I'm going to look for Lillian, Frederick, and Charles and add them here and I'll show you why. I don't want to keep adding these people and to keep adding events to these people's timelines. I want to be able to do this automatically. So we have Lillian, Frederick, and Charles. So if I were to go to Frederick's page, inside of Timeline, I will be able to see that he lived in Hoboken, New Jersey in 1900. And all of his siblings are here as well, and that 1900 federal census record is also under citations. I can see that he was a lithographer through the lithographer page, or I can actually just go through his page. Frederick click down and see an occupation as lithographer. So now what I want to do is add some reading material. And I'm going to show you how um, you can do this with a web clipper. So I want to add some reading material to William, maybe do an article on printmaking during the 20th century. So I could either add it here, find a link, and put that article in, or I can go right to the link. So if I want to save this, I can use an extension on Chrome called Save to Notion. I've done a video on this. I haven't used it in a while, but I'm going to show you how I can use this extension to help me with this wiki. And I'm going to leave a link for you guys down below to download this extension. It's a lot better than the native web clipper. So you can add forms and connect those forms to databases in your workspace. So I'm going to look at my workspace here and I'm going to add reading material. There is a database in here called reading material. 
and I'm going to either clip the page content, I could do that, which let's do that there actually. And I could also include members, families, icon, I can delete, content image, I can delete. And in read article link, if I go back, there is a property called read article. I can fill that out with this page URL automatically and members and families. That's a relation property in here right now, because I'm in William's page, it's connecting automatically to William, but also I can connect to a family. So if there's any like URLs or any web pages that explain uh, further about a certain family or surname. So I'm going to save this form like so. Go to reading material. This gives me the title of this article. I'm going to attach it to William and possibly also attach it to Lathrop because a lot of people in this family work in the printing industry. So let's do that and add new page. So once I go back to Notion, there it is. And it has saved the entire page from the internet. And you can apply um, templates inside of save to Notion, the extension, which I should have done. There we go. So now I have one thing in my reading material database right here attached to Lathrop and William Lathrop in particular. And I believe Frederick is also a lithographer, so I'm going to add him. While we're here, let's go to the family dashboard and look around. So here's where everything's collecting. You're doing all of your work inside of the members database like we were just doing now. However, here is where all of that information, all the things describing members is collecting. Surnames are here. Occupations are being collected inside of these neat um, series select properties that we have up here. They're along inside of a board view. Under members, I also have a member timeline. This is another way I can compartmentalize groups of people. And I do it in 25 year chunks. So I actually made a video on how to do this, how to create a timeline with a number property. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm grouping this board view by year born and dividing it into 25 years. Again, this is all happening in the background. A lot of things here are happening in the background. Things I'm adding manually are just through the members pages. Speaking of grouping, I'm going to go and show you guys my places link and how this is being grouped. So I do have a view in the database for just all places. And like I said, I'm grabbing different sections with this syntax where I have place, city, region, country, all divided by commas. I have another few database views that are grouped by region. So here is all cities in Connecticut, all cities in New Jersey so far, and that will keep growing. I also have one grouped by country and by type. Right now there's only cities. Let's see what else I have here. I have addresses where all of my addresses are going to be collected as well. I can add what type of house this is, the ownership, home worth, monthly rent. Sometimes you can find that information on census records, religions and beliefs. And here are my collections. Remember we created a collection for World War II draft cards and the 1900 United States federal census records. Here's that citation and the event associated. And I can keep clicking around. I can also go to the through member associated with this event 
through members. I can see by the icon, it is William. And now I'm back to William. So there's a lot going on here. I'm just creating different ways to categorize information for me to quickly access. Like for instance, incomplete members and complete members. Incomplete members is a section for all members that do not have a ticked box for complete. So there's a bookmark checkbox and a complete checkbox. So I can come here to see all of my recently added members. I can also see specifically members that are missing parents that are missing ID numbers, missing year born. Mabel McChesney is missing a year born. So I'm going to go to my ancestry because I do have the year she was born, 1884 to 1953. Put that in the title. Go back to the dashboard go to incomplete members and missing year born, she is no longer in that list. And there's a lot more here I probably haven't gone through, but I have complete members as well. And I have immigration, family events, if I just want to see immigration events, marriages, if I just want to see marriages, and so on. And eventually I am going to be publishing my entire database that I have for my personal wiki, and I'm going to be publishing it with Super. And I'm really excited to share that with you guys. So you can take a look at a finished product. I hope you guys found that useful. Of course, there are links down below. This one has a lot of links, so you guys can check out other resources. Also, if you have never done family research, I will have resources. I also have another video that I have just uploaded about Mermaid, the newest feature that allows you to create flowcharts. I'll leave a link down below for that as well. With that being said, I will see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.